tonight, this morning rather, give God your highest praise, hallelujah, 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 This morning I would like to read from a passage of scripture that we most of mostly read from around the Christmas season. But it's Isaiah 9 and 6 and it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Are you glad you serve a God who is all those things and more to you, who's seen you through trials and th seen you through situations, but He's still been your God. Lift your voice and shout hallelujah to Him one more time. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And He's the one who makes me whole. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And He's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my store. And He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, He is my friend. song in the middle of the night he is the joy in my soul and he's the one who makes me whole he is the peace in my store and he's the refuge from all harm i'm talking about jesus jesus he is my friend he is the strength of my life he is the song in the middle of the night the joy in my soul, and He's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my store, and He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, He is my friend. He is the strength of my life, He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul, and He's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my soul, and He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, He is my friend. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And he's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my soul. And he's the refuge from all harm. My soul without Jesus. Jesus, he is my friend. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And he's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my storm. And he's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus. God, come on. Let's love him. Let's sing it today. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And he's the one who makes me he is the peace in my soul, and He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, He is my friend. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul, and He's the one who makes me whole. And he's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, he is my friend. Oh, hallelujah to God. I worship you today. I bless your name, oh beautiful Savior. I glorify you. It's all and magnify your name, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, he is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And he's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my soul. And he's the refuge from all. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, he is my 
my friend. He is the strength of my life. He is the song in the middle of the night. He is the joy in my soul. And he's the one who makes me whole. He is the peace in my soul. And he's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Is that the way you feel about the Lord today? Oh, he is the peace in my storm, and He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, He is my friend. Well, He is the peace in my storm, and He's the refuge from all harm. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, He is my friend. Oh, let's love Him. Come on, give Him a high praise now. All of my praise belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. I am so very thankful for the spirit of revival. Amen. That's in this place this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord that is here with us. And as long as we will live righteously and act justly and worship him in spirit and in truth, he will always be with us. Amen, amen. I, I was pondering a few days ago, amen, the book of Revelation chapters two and three, amen, as the Lord spoke to the pastors of the seven churches of Revelation, amen. And in spite of their shortcomings, Amen. In spite of their human frailty, amen, he said he was there among the candlesticks. Now, there were some cases, amen, that he said, if you don't change your ways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove your candlestick. Praise God. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Are you thankful for the kindness and the mercy of God that works on our behalf every day of our lives? Hallelujah to God. I'm so thankful for his presence today. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful week we had. A very exhausting week. And uh, a week that uh, will leave you tired and sore. I played softball four days. And Brother David, I can't, it's so good to see you in church. Praise God. Home. Amen. Amen. But uh, I, I came to um, a startling observation on Monday. As I was out there on the ball field, I looked around and realized that I was the oldest preacher on the ball field. There was just a bunch of kids there is all it was. No. Amen. I was the oldest one. I saw one brother, and I said, now, you're older than I am. How old are you? He said, 40. <laughs> I said, 40 what? <laughs> Amen. But I did my best to hang with them. There was one time I said, well, I'm going to get me a runner. And, um, and then I said, you know what? I've never had a runner in my life. I'm running for myself, so I did. Praise God. And then thankfully, the last game, the last day, um, they walked me. <laughs> Amen. So I got to walk to first. Praise God. But uh, it was a great week. But not just those times, obviously, of recreation. But I'm telling you what, the intensity and the hunger 
and the thirst. Amen. The power of God that was manifest in that place. As a result of men of God coming together and saying, we want to provide, amen, an apostolic revival, holiness, Holy Ghost experience for our youth. Amen. And then the young people that came with such a hunger for the things of God. And God sending us those three men and Brother Uzzle and Brother Taylor Fish. Amen. Brother Kelly Patrick to preach and teach the word of God each day. And there was no two services uh, that, were, that were really the same. Uh, the teaching sessions were similar, but even those God uh, gave to our young people and the young people of those churches represented there. Amen. Wonderful nuggets of truth. Praise God. And it wasn't, it, it was, it was grown up preaching, I'm telling you. And, uh, and then there were miracles there. There were people that received the gift of the Holy Ghost there. Without doubt, there were those who surrendered to call and ministry there. Praise God. And that's what these youth camps and youth events and youth meetings are all about. Amen. It's not where we learn how to live for God necessarily. You do that at the home church. Amen. Praise God. But those are times when young people can go and have an experience and an encounter with God. Amen. They're there worshiping with other uh, young people like Precious Faith, making friends. Amen. I'm so thankful. Uh, I feel refreshed in my spirit once again. I'm thankful. Amen. Tired in our bodies. You stay up and talk. And I thank God for men that uh, we didn't just stay up late, the preachers, and tell stories about frivolous things that happens at times just like with anybody else but we were able to talk about the word of God works of the spirit the work of the Holy Ghost in our midst hunger and desire shared goals I thank God for these men of God uh, that God has put in my life and put me in theirs amen God's got great things for his people in these last days I believe that with all of my heart in fact, I'm going to preach about that this morning. Praise God. Glad for those of our youth that were able to go. Some, uh, I believe, uh, I know Elena and Lauren, would you stand? Amen. They were able to be there the entire week, uh, beginning Monday when we got there sometime between 10 and 11 a.m. And then we headed home about 9 or a little before yesterday morning. And then thanks to Brother Caleb, uh, Morgan for faithfully driving the van, I think every night but Monday, and uh, giving these other young people an opportunity to go. If you went to one of the, well, let me stop right there. Starting Wednesday night, Brother Dylan and Brother Ethan, y'all stand. They were able to join us as campers and uh, participate and partake of all of the uh, things that um, God had. In fact, in the Thursday night service, Amen. There were, there were miracles that took place in that service. There was one uh, young lady had on a knee brace, and she took it off, testified to uh, no more pain. Amen. Her knee. There were other testimonies. The next morning, uh, there was a back brace that was on the pulpit and showed. Amen. And uh, other things that happened. Brother Dylan. Uh, testified and he prayed fervently and his peers were around him I felt the surge of the power of the Holy Ghost during that time amen and uh, he went into that service with radiating pain in his arm he went to, came to me at the end of that service and then I said you go tell brother Wells and there was no more pain amen at the end of that <laughs> prayer meeting We are continuing to believe God for total healing and, and uh, creative work. Amen. In, in uh, Brother Dylan's arm. And uh, praise God. I'm just believing that with all of my heart. And he was holding on to faith. And God, God worked there. We're wanting to see uh, the complete work done. 
Amen. And so you just keep holding on to that faith, Brother Dylan. Every time God gives you a little bit, you just go ahead and pull up another little bit more. Hang on to what you got and get some more in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And then if you were one of those that rode a van, uh, another uh, service to come up, would you stand? Amen. God bless these. Praise the Lord. I know Brother Spencer and Sister Angela were able to come up tonight as well. And so I'm so grateful for those that were able to be a part of that. And uh, these times are good for our youth. It helps us to see the big picture. Amen. Somebody once said we should always be attached to, and it was a wise elder, Brother Von Morton, told younger man of God, he said, uh, basically, don't be the biggest thing in your world, but be connected to something larger than you. So these times are times like that. Praise God. So God bless you, young people. And uh, tonight's praise service, I don't know if you'll have an opportunity to testify about it or not, but uh, anyway, God bless you. You can be seated. Let's thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for Brother Zach Wells, and uh, he was the director of that camp, a man of passion and truth. He preached here just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, thank God for his burden for young people. Praise God. I want to provide uh, not just a slipshod operation, but something of excellence. Amen. That's what we should all be striving for. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I feel the presence of God here today, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. Amen. I want to be all I can be for Jesus. How about you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Few announcements I do need to make. There is a wedding shower uh, for Sister Naya and Brother Caleb. That will be this Saturday at 2 p.m. And uh, you know, today is July the 3rd. Uh, you know what? Y'all are getting married next month. Woo! <laughs> Praise God. So that wedding shower is this Saturday, July the 9th. In fact, Brother Wells told Caleb uh, yet, uh, Friday night, he said, next year you'll be here working. Amen. So once you get married and you're a young man, you are assigned a job. You can be a, a counselor or whatever. So anyway, you got your orders already. Praise the Lord. Amen. Both of y'all. Amen. So that wedding shower, we want to celebrate with them and uh, leave the information about the registries is right there. Praise God. Amen. No prayer meeting tomorrow night. Tomorrow's July the 4th. I want to give you that opportunity to spend that time with your family to celebrate. Amen. Our freedom. And then on Wednesday night, I'm happy to announce to you a revival service. I understand you had a revival service around here this past Wednesday night. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for the good reports that I continue to receive. If I didn't respond, if you reached out to me this past week and I did not respond, please forgive me. The mobile service on that campground was horrendous. And uh, I would get text messages every now and then. And uh, some t I'd try to respond, and then I'd look a day later, and it didn't go through. So thank God for the good reports that I did receive. Brother and Sister Petrie were at the camp a couple of days and uh, uh, told us about it. But this Wednesday night, amen, praise God, we're going to be having Brother Taylor Fish, uh, Evangelist Taylor Fish with us. And he was the evening evangelist for the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday services. He's currently preaching a revival in North Little Rock for the homes, but they come home every week. I, he called me yesterday and I said, when you have a Wednesday night available, because he's booked until eternity, praise God, but when you have a Wednesday night available, I want you to come. He said, I'd come this Wednesday night. Amen. Because he comes home, they come home every week. But uh, we'll be looking forward to what God's going to do. This is an anointed man of God and he has a precious godly family. 
And uh, we're looking forward to what God has today, tonight, Wednesday, until Jesus comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight will be praise service. Uh, Brother Caleb Morgan will be preaching and uh, coordinating this service. And uh, I want to say I really thank God. Uh, it, let me just say it this way. As time continues to go along, it becomes more and more apparent, apparent and I haven't had any doubt, but uh, God is uh, shining his light upon my son and laying his hand upon him. And it's uh, being recognized by men of God who don't even know who he is. In fact, he was singing on Friday uh, with the praise singers there and uh, brother one of the ministers turned around and said is that, is that your boy amen and it's just being recognized the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I'm thankful and that doesn't happen uh, just because somebody's kind of lived slipshod amen but uh, I was listening to brother Fish and other ministers preach this week and they talk about their calling. Amen. Went to their pastor about, I feel a call to preach. He said, well, you know what? There's a sign out there. Needs messages changed. Get to work on that. We'll talk about the preaching business later. Amen. So anything that a young man could do and many things that full-grown men could do. Uh, Brother Caleb has been involved in those things all of his life and um, any of you young men have any aspiration or desire or feel the urge the call of God in your life make yourself busy amen in the kingdom of God in every way possible engage whatever the youth group's doing you ought to be involved in it amen whatever the church is doing you ought to be involved in it praise God Step out and volunteer. What can I do? Amen. Amen. So over the past, uh, well, beginning of this year, first service of the year, I uh, made a comment commissioning Brother Caleb concerning youth services and what have you now. They're getting ready to get married over the next few months. You're going to see as we are continuing to work him into new areas and then after marriage sister Naya as well new areas of leadership in the, among the youth and uh, I want you to understand that the things that uh, young people hearing me and parents hearing me of the youth the things that brother Caleb would ask of you he's not doing it of his own accord but under the authority of the pastor and the director Amen, the man of God in this church. So be cooperative with it. Because there's going to come a time, and it's not going to be very long, when he's going to be youth director, along with his wife-to-be, Sister Nyware. Amen. I want to say we appreciate uh, both of them and their dedication to God. And, uh, and so I believe God's got great things. Hallelujah. We've got a moment to seize, and if we let it slip, it's forever lost can't be retrieved amen 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 praise God are you glad to be part of the work of the kingdom of God in 2022 <laughs> hallelujah to God hallelujah to God amen so remember the wedding shower for them amen this Saturday also remember each family every service take one or two visitor cards, invite somebody to the house of God before the next service. That's every service. Let's do that. We want to uh, practice and live in a lifestyle of evangelism. Amen, amen, amen. Well, right now you have an opportunity to give to the kingdom of God. God has blessed us and we want to return. Amen, the blessing unto him. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to give. To the kingdom, we pray your blessing and favor as we receive the offering in Jesus' name. Our youth will remain in here this morning. Other classes 
after you march by and give. Amen. You can be dismissed to your class. There's nothing but praise in my heart for the Lord. Oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart for the Lord. The Lord's been mighty good to me. That's why I'm happy. Oh, can't you see? There's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, the Lord's been mighty good to me. That's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy. Oh, can't you see? There's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, well, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, well, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, the Lord has been mighty good to me. That's why I'm happy. Oh, can't you see? There's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, well, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, well, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, the Lord has been mighty good to me. That's why I'm happy. Oh, can't you see? There's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, the Lord's been mighty good to me. That's why I'm happy. Oh, can't you see? There's nothing but praise in my heart. For the Lord, oh, there's nothing but praise in my heart. That's why I'm happy, oh can't you see, there's nothing but praise in my heart for the Lord. Hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God. Oh clap your hands to the Lord, let's give him great praise. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. I'm going to the word of the Lord today. The book of Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Again, we're so happy. Amen. Brother David Hargraves is in for the weekend. He's able to be in church. Praise God. We miss you so much. Amen. And I'm so glad to see you today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Clint, good to see you again. Amen. We love you. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 47, beginning with verse number 1. Everybody say revival. Amen. That's where we are today, and I'm the evangelist. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse number 1. If you're there, would you say amen? And what the Bible said afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Everybody say the door of the house. Praise God. We need to make sure the door of the house is open. Amen. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without to the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits it's about a third of a mile 
and he brought me through the waters. Everybody say through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. Everybody say through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river, if I say a river, that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Praise God. Praise God. You start out ankle deep. Amen. You go a little further and it's knee deep. You go another third of a mile and it's up to your loins. And then another thousand cubits or third of a mile and you find that it's waters to swim in. Praise God. I want to preach to you today going a little further. Praise God. Going a little further. Praise God. How many really in your heart hunger for more of God. Praise the Lord. I see almost every hand is lifted. Amen. If it's not a hand lifted, it was a nod of affirmation or an expression on your face. I sent a message to Brother Fish this morning and I have it in my notes here today. It's just a thought I wanted to share. And I want to tell you his response. I said, in this most holy, most sacred work of the kingdom, we must maximize our efforts. Simply getting by is not sufficient. And he responded, simply getting by is sin at this point. We have access to excess. We have access to excess. Our God is more than enough. And we individually have choices. The church is going forward. The church is moving on. It's my choice whether I stay sitting on the bank, stay in the house, get water on my, to my ankles, or whether I'm in waters to swim in. Praise God. To know God the way he wants you to know him, you have to take risks. You got to get out there where you, you, you can't touch the bottom anymore. Where you don't have control of the situation. Where God is the only one that's in control and we're in his current. We're in his river. How many want to go a little further today? Amen. Let's lift up our hands and ask God's anointing to be upon us in a powerful way. Oh, blessed, precious, glorious Savior. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. What a mighty, mighty, glorious, and matchless God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. I need your help today. I need your anointing, oh God. I need your anointing, oh God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to continue. I want to say before I get started today, when I went to bed last night, man, I thought I would be preaching something different today. But when I woke up this morning, God brought to uh, my mind a portion of an old message that I preached years ago. Uh, the writings uh, that he brought to my mind came uh, from the writings of Frank Bartleman and uh and, and so a little bit after 6 o'clock this morning, amen, I was digging 
and uh, searching, and uh, God was talking to me today. Praise God. I want to tell you what the Lord would have for us today. Are you wanting to receive what God would speak uh, to his people? Amen. Let's lift our hands again and say, God, I want you to talk to my heart. I want you to speak to my spirit. I want you to do a work in me. Amen. Come on, let's, let's pray that sincerely today. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. It would seem to me that God is continuing to make the call the second mile. The concept is not just a thought-provoking message that I preached a few weeks back. Man, it's not something that we just heard and then forget and have no application to our individual lives. But that message was a call to action by the Spirit of God call to action for all of us. As we are nearer to the coming of the Lord than ever before, I believe that God is desiring to pour out His Spirit upon His people. Amen. In, in a way that has not been experienced in maybe even decades, if ever, I would say concerning and have said it to several men concerning the meeting that we just uh, got back from, that some of our youth were able to attend, that I'd be far pressed to go back a lot of years to find another with similar intensity and hunger and preaching and desire and passion and thirst and demonstration. Maybe all the way back to my childhood in the Kansas camps that I went to as a child. And I believe where there is that type of hunger was manifest there. I mean, it doesn't have to be at a camp meeting per se or a conference. While we do not live in the conference vein, obviously at home, there are times that we have to do like we did during the day, even at the camp, and sit down and be taught. But I do believe where there is that intensity of hunger and thirst and expectation. Everybody say expectation. God will meet his people. He'll meet us on the level of our faith, on the level of our hunger, on the level of our desire. And so my job as pastor, amen, is to preach to you until you have that level of hunger and passion and desire and faith. Amen. And preach and plow and work and hope that all will arrive at the place that God has brought me to. Amen. That you develop and have the vision that God has given me. You don't see it, at least you buy into it. You possess it as your own as you hear it preached. I do believe that God is desiring to pour out his spirit upon his people in a powerful way. I don't believe the book of Acts was written just as a reading textbook, a man, but it is a living book. It is the history of the church, but not just the history of the church, but it is the pattern of the church, pattern of the church. And we talk about that when we talk about salvation, God's plan of salvation. Where do we get our preaching from concerning the plan of salvation? Amen. Obviously, the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we see it unfolding in the book of Acts. But it cannot just be the pattern of the plan of salvation, but the pattern of operation. Amen. The operation of the gifts of the Spirit. The working of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The miracles that occurred, that took place. It's the will of God that these things are happening in 2022, just as they did, amen, on the day of Pentecost and in the days and years following. 
And I'm here to tell you that those things are happening in the earth today. They are taking place in the earth today. Amen. It's not something simply of the past or of the future. But it is occurring where there is true hunger and faith and desire and passion. I believe the operation, uh, the operation of the church, the operation of God is going to be most prevalent among those who are prepared to receive it. Those that make themselves ready, amen, and have that place available in their lives. And it cannot be a secondary place. It must be a primary place. Place. It will be among those who have prepared themselves to receive it. So again, it falls the lot of the preacher of the gospel, the preacher of the word of God, the pastor of the church to help to prepare a congregation to bring themselves to the place where they are no longer so tied to the things of this world, but they're tied to the promises of God. Amen, amen, the work of the Holy Ghost and being engaged and involved in the operation of the local assembly is more important, amen, than a livelihood or career or an education. For the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 is still accurate when Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Amen. We could uh, try to take uh, logistics or uh, logical reasoning and say, well, this just doesn't work in 2022. It does work. It works in every generation and every period of time because it's the truth of the Word of God. This will occur. The operation of God in the earth in these last days will be most prevalent among those who have prepared to receive it. Amen. It could be that while some churches are growing and thriving in revival, at the same time, there are going to be those that are closing their doors. Amen. Whose windows will be shuttered, whose um, power will be disconnected. Amen. From the grid. Amen. But that, as long as there's breath in my body, I will earnestly contend not just for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, amen, but for everything that God has for his people in the earth today. We must prepare ourselves collectively and individually. What you do at home is important to what happens here. Whether you're praying between services does make a difference to what happens when we come here. Whether you're taking a card and inviting somebody to the house of God in between times does have an effect on what happens here. Where God is in your life on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday does have a profound impact of what happens on Wednesday and Sunday in the house of God. This is going to be in the places that prepare to receive it. In the Old Testament, we're familiar with the story of the couple who were without child. But they didn't build the room on their house for the man of God because they wanted a child. Amen. They built the room on their house because they wanted the visitation, the presence of God in their lives. Amen. You don't do things so you can get a miracle. Amen. You don't do things, amen, so you can somehow uh, uh, have some type of leverage with God. But we prepare a place, amen, for God's Spirit to inhabit. And when God's Spirit inhabits, these signs shall follow them. Miracles, healings, deliverances, Holy Ghost infillings, people being set free from the bondage of sin. It will take place in places that make a place for the presence of God. Oh, come on, let's clap our hands and shout unto the Lord. God will feed where there is hunger. Amen. Where there's no hunger, he's not going to feed. He will give drink where there is thirst, but where there is no thirst or desire, he will withhold his hand. 
He will pour out revival where preparation to receive the revival has been made. Amen. I, it comes to mind in considering those seven churches that are, that are uh, addressed in the book of Revelation, the first couple of, uh, second and the third chapter. Amen. That one church that was without rebuke. And that was the church of Philadelphia. Amen. Where God said to the angel, to the pastor, he said, oh, to that man of God, I have set before you an open door which no man can shut. And he said, I've done this because you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Oh, it just comes to me by inspiration of the Spirit right now. Amen. He didn't say it to the whole church, but he told it to the pastor, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is faithful and true. I've set before you an open door. I've come to tell you what I believe the Spirit is speaking to us today. God has set before the church of sulfur an open door. Amen. An opportunity. Amen. An, an option to walk through. Amen. To go into a place of revival that this church has not experienced since its birth. Since its inception. Hallelujah. And I'm here today to make you uncomfortable. I'm here today to drive you to a place of prayer and fasting. I'm here to get behind you in the spirit with a spiritual prod that says I cannot simply exist in a state of nothingness, in a state of Laodicea when I'm part of the church of Philadelphia. God has something outstanding for his people. I wonder if anybody in Sulphur is willing to open your heart and say I'm making room for revival. I'm making room for the supernatural. I'm preparing a place for the move of God in my life and in my midst. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. So, amen, I'm willing. Uh, he said, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. There's a song that I've heard recently, and I'm not going to share all the lyrics with you here today. Amen. But when it gets to this part, there's something that comes over me that I cannot contain, not that I would want to, but I cannot contain my praise and thanksgiving to God. For it says, when God opens a door, no one can shut it. No one can shut it. No devil from hell can stop what God has started. When God gives you a word, it's ever settled. It's ever settled. No devil from hell can block what God has promised. I'm telling you, God's got a door. And it's a great and effectual door. And it's open before us. Hallelujah. Ah, I'm going to do my best not to preach until your hunger pangs are unbearable. But let me say this right now. When I was praying in the last year or two of our, uh, the last several months, I guess I should say, of our evangelizing tenure, the second time around that I was feeling that God was about to trans, uh, transfer our uh, job duties in his kingdom, I began to pray that God would set before us that open door. Uh, that scripture was continuing to come to my mind that I've set before you a, a door that's great and effectual, a great and effectual door. And he said, with it there are many adversaries. That's what the word of God says. I'm telling you, there have been adversaries uh, that have been defeated over the past number of years. Uh, things that would try to control, things that would try to stifle, Amen. Things that would try to diminish the faith of the man of God, therefore destroying the faith of the people of God. But one by one, day after day, month after month, year after year, we have watched as those things have been bound and, and many of those things have been cast out. Just a few weeks ago, you would remember at the conclusion of a service, I stepped to this podium 
And I said, um, amen, I felt um, uh, the visitation of an old spirit that tried to stick his head back in here, amen, just to see if he was welcome. Well, we've got news for the devil here, not just from the microphone, but from the pew today. There is no binding spirit that can take residence in God's house. There is no anti-revival attitude that has a place in the house of the Lord at First Pentecostal Church of Sulphur. Oh no, we prayed too many prayers. We fought too many battles. We've made too much progress. We've gone too far for us to now just sit on the porch and watch the water flow. I'm telling you, it's time to go forth, amen, into the place where there are waters to swim in. How many is willing to go a little further? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So in this last days, in this generation on whom the ends of the earth has come, I am willing to be one of those men that God chooses to use. Whatever the cost, whatever the price, amen, whatever it takes, I'm willing to be one of those men. And you say, well, Brother Morgan, Pastor, that's a very dangerous thing to say. Amen. I'm here to ask the question to every person, whether it's a preacher, a Sunday school teacher, a welder, an architect, a draftsman, a nurse, a school teacher, a truck driver, whatever your occupation. The things of this world are only for a season. They're only going to last for a little while. And if I give my life in the cause of Jesus Christ, if, if that's the cost, if I have to lay it down, amen, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Amen, I'm ready to be offered. I'm ready to be given. I'm ready to be spent for the... I wonder if I've got anybody else that's feeling the same way today. Whatever the cost, whatever it takes, I'm willing to seek the kingdom first. I'm willing to go after his righteousness first. I'm willing to realize the most important thing in my life is not my paycheck. It's not my job. It's not my school. It's not my education. It's not my personal dreams. But it is the work of Jesus Christ. The work of the kingdom of God. Being a tool in the hand of the Lord in these last days. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise today. Thank you. Praise God. Oh, come on, let's praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Amen. And not only am I desiring or willing to be one of those men that God chooses to use, but I am desiring for our church to be one of those places that he visits with a special touch of his power. It's not for our glory. Amen. But God calls men to lead. And God causes congregations to be examples. Amen. I'm not going to stand here today. Amen. And, 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 and think more of myself than I ought to do. But I know what I know in the Holy Ghost. And I know what I feel in the Spirit. Amen. God hadn't called us to be hidden. God hadn't called us to be tucked away somewhere. God hadn't called us, amen, to just barely get by. But God has established some things in this place. I believe he's going to cause his light and his face to shine upon us. Hallelujah. In fact, he made that promise to me. Amen. Back in 2003, as I was praying about the continuation of the ministry that he's caused, called me to do. And as we were making uh, preparations to move to the next phase of the calling of our ministry, he brought to my mind the passage of scripture when Moses was speaking to those, Joshua and others who would follow after him. He said, I will cause my face to shine upon you. And then at the next turn of the next phase, God said to me in prayer, I'm going to be with you whithersoever thou goest. In other words, wherever you go, I'm telling you people of God, God has a spotlight. God has a light to shine on you and he's got a light to shine in you but it's up to us are we going to stay on the porch and watch the water flow are we going to get out there and waters to swim in it is it is 
lives within our nature. Amen. To hang on to things that are common. It's within our nature to hang on to things that we are comfortable with. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes God just gives you a shove. He just gives you a push. And he says, look out now. There are some places I'm going to take you. Now, if you're going to stay tied to the porch, you can't go. Amen. If you're going to be one that's only going to watch it happen, you're going to, you're going to sell out for less than what God has in store for you. But if you'll be willing, let's look at me, please. If you'll be willing to link up with the Spirit and link up with the power and link up with the manifestation and the man of God that God has put in your life, God's going to take us places. I said it's going to be uncomfortable sometimes. It's going to be risk-taking sometimes. But when we're in the flow of the Spirit, we're in the waters to swim in. Where the Spirit is flowing, we don't have to fear. Let's clap our hands and give a Lord praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, lift up your voice and magnify the Lord right now. Come on, do it with all your heart now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So I'm willing to be one of those men that he chooses to use. And I'm desiring for our church to be one of those places that he visits with a special touch of his power. And not just visit, but inhabit, lives, dwells. Amen. And so I'm preaching to motivate. And I'm preaching to transform each of you into a vessel to contain and pour out the power of God into others in these last days. Now, if you're going to lie, you're not going to be used. If you're going to curse, you're not going to be used. If you're not going to pray and dedicate and consecrate, amen, you're just going to be a fixture. But if you will totally commit and consecrate and dedicate yourself, God will use you as a vessel to contain what He's going to pour out. Well... I believe this for a long time and I'm going to say it again. I've said it multiple times through my ministry. I'm going to say it again. Amen. And we are going to live according to the scripture. But the word of God says, these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't just say the preacher. It said the believer. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out devils. Ye shall speak with new tongues. Ye shall take up serpents. If you drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. Ye shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm telling you, Brother Dale, your commission to minister at Stonebridge, that means your commission to lay hands on the sick. Amen, amen, to give the word of God. Amen, Brother Caleb Morgan, you're commissioned, amen, to minister to the young people. I was talking to Brother Fish a few days ago and listening to him as he preached. Amen. That's how he started out in his local church in ministry to the young people. He said there were times that they had as many as six that received the gift of the Holy Ghost in a youth service. Not in a main church service. I'm saying it's going to happen here. I'm saying it's going to take place right here in Salt. Amen, there were times, amen, that in you service, not in big church, but in you service, that there were those that came with sickness and affliction in their body, and the youth pastor, the youth minister, anointed them with oil, and God healed their affliction and their disease. Do you think God is respecter of persons? No, he's not, except for the fact that it was a young man of God who made himself available to be an instrument. Ha! Where's my microphone? Hallelujah! It was a young man of God who made himself available to be an instrument to the glory of God. Come on, Sulphur Church. What are we expecting here today? feel it in your spirit as you're responding today. I feel your connection with the man of God and with the spirit of God today. There is a hunger. There is a thirst. There is a desire. 
Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you a large reason why it's here. Now, you can say what you want to and judge me for saying this, but it's because for nearly 10 years I've been preaching it. It's because for nearly 10 years I've been putting it out there. And you've heard it before I ever got here. But after 10 years, if it wasn't here, my little family, we'd have our suitcases and we'd move on down to find the people who wanted a move of God, who wanted a move of the Spirit. But thank God for hearts that say, amen, I'm ready, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm not just gonna survive, but I'm gonna thrive, I'm gonna be everything that Jesus has called me to be. Let's clap our hands and make Come on, lift up your voice. So I have been preaching to motivate you. I have been preaching to transform your thinking. You say, Pastor, you want to change the way I think? You better believe it. If you're not thinking right, I want to change your thinking. If you're not thinking revival, I want to change your thinking. If you're thinking we got to sit stuck in some kind of mindset, I'm preaching to change your thinking. We're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Hey, there's holiness in the church. There's right doctrine in the church. But there's miracles in the church. There's signs and wonders and deliverances and the power of the Holy Ghost in the church. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm going to get back over there in just a minute. But let me follow this little vein that I'm feeling right now. I understand that in the book of Acts, there were those like Ananias and Sapphira. There were those that sought the preeminence. There were all of those things that we would not want. Amen. Around us, especially within us, but they were there even in the book of Acts church. And can I tell you that Jesus Christ himself, I've asked myself the question, how can I feel such a power of God when I'm preaching and that surge of the spirit and there be those in the congregation that feel like and appear that they're not even phased, not even in the least bit by the power of God. And then I realize that Jesus Christ himself, God, the image of God, amen, the form of God, the power of God, the arm of God, the express image of the invisible God, Jesus Christ himself couldn't get through to the Pharisees and he couldn't get through to some of the publicans or to the, to the Sadducees and the scribes and the rulers. Amen. He could help the woman at the well. He could help the woman taken in the act of adultery but it was the Pharisees that took him and hung him upon the cross. Do I believe in holiness as much or more than I ever have in my life? But I'm to tell you we better remember that when Simon was being critical there was a woman that didn't have it all together was worshiping with the alabaster box of ointment come on give God some praise here today hallelujah so I'm preaching to motivate and I'm preaching to transform all of us, each of you, into a vessel which can contain and pour out the power of God into others in these last days. Come on, let's step beyond embarrassment. Let's step beyond pride. Let's step beyond bashfulness. Somebody may need you to pray for them in the grocery store. I'm trying to remember who told me just a few days ago Amen, they were in a place, it might have been one of you, I'm thinking it was. Amen, and there was a need that arose before them and they were right there in the grocery store and they said, can I pray for you? Amen, and they began to pray and the Spirit of God touched that individual right there. These signs shall follow them that believe. We can stay hidden away or we can shine the light. We can stay tucked within the four walls or we can let our light shine everywhere we go. God is calling the church of Philadelphia. He has set before us an open door. No man can shut it. He said no man can shut it. 
Thank God we don't have that problem. But I preached in places where folks, and we have had it in the past, and thank God it's no longer. Amen. Where folks just try to stare you down to stifle the move of the Holy Ghost. But the word said, no man, no man can shut it. And can I go a little further? No devil in hell can stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this most holy, most sacred, most important work of the kingdom, we must maximize. Everybody say maximize. Maximize our efforts. Maximize our efforts on an individual basis. In other words, look at what you're doing for God. Hold it before you. Come on, just do that right now as if you had it in your hand. Hold it before you and observe it. How effective is it? How could I change it? How could I make it better? How could I maximize the efforts that I am doing for the kingdom of God? Amen. How could I get more profit? Amen. Brother Caleb preached about it at Pagina not very long ago concerning the vineyard. What could I have done in this vineyard to make it more fruitful? Every one of us need to look at that individually. How could my prayers become more powerful? How could I have more fervency in my spirit? How could I have more spiritual compunction and drive and desire? What can I do? Amen. We must maximize our efforts. There's no... Uh, no argument that hell has unleashed all of its fury. And so we as the church of Jesus Christ must more than match the efforts of hell because if we simply match the efforts of hell, then we're only holding hell at bay and we're not making any pros- progress. And so we've got to defy the, the laws, amen, of, of physics and push beyond and give more, amen, and be more effective in God's business than Satan is in his business. Well, let's praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Simply getting by is not sufficient. Simply holding our head above water is not sufficient. Amen. You say, well, you may be thinking here today, well, that's how my spiritual life has been since the beginning. Well, something's not right. Amen. We're going to have struggle. We're going to have trial. We're going to have difficulty. We're all going to face adversity. But there's supposed to be those mountaintop times. They're supposed to be in the life of every child of God, those times of productivity. And so observe, look, evaluate. Amen. Get in the Holy Ghost and say, God, how can I do things differently than I'm doing them right now to maximize, amen, my effectiveness and fruitfulness in the kingdom of God? I can't tell you necessarily, amen, or I could maybe speak a word to you and give you some direction, but when you get revelation for yourself, hey, when a person has revelation of holiness, you don't have to beat them over the head about it. And when a person has a revelation of prayer, you don't have to command them to pray. And when a person has a revelation about the power of worship, you don't have to beg them to worship. And when a person recognizes the power of response, amen, both both visible, spiritual, and verbal, amen, saying amen, or I agree, or I'm with the word of God, when you get a revelation of that, nobody has to have to pull it out. So God let revelation come. Revelation is going to come to each of us individually through our own prayer. Now, there are going to be times that you're going to get the splash over, splash over of revelation because of my anointing. Amen. Because of the head, the overseer of this church, the man of God that God has authorized to operate right here in this place and in this city. You're going to get something simply because of the anointing of the umbrella that's covering you. But there's some things you've got to get for yourself. Save yourself. Pray yourself. Worship yourself. Fast yourself. Each person individually. It must answer the call of God to go a little further. Amen. There is a saying, a Latin term that, that is spoken, carpe diem, which means seize the day or seize the opportunity or seize the moment. And this is what God brought to me 
as soon as I woke up this morning, this was the first thing that was on my mind. And I found these old notes, amen, from a message. If you want to know how far back it was, it was before I ever started evangelizing. Amen. It was when I was preaching for my daddy back at Lunida, probably in 19, uh, uh, I don't even know when it was, 1995 or something, four perhaps. Amen. Or maybe even earlier than that. But I found this as I was studying uh, the Azusa Street Revival. And Frank Bartleman in June 1906, whom Brother Booker introduced us to just a couple of months ago, wrote these words. Listen carefully. Opportunity, once passed, is lost forever. There is a time when the tide is sweeping by our door. We may then plunge in and be carried to glorious blessing, success, and victory. To stand shivering on the bank, timid, or paralyzed with stupor at such a time is to miss all and most miserably fail. I'm going to read that again. To stand shivering on the bank, timid, there's no time for timidity, or paralyzed with stupor at such a time that opportunity comes, amen, is to miss all and most miserably fail, both for time and for eternity. Oh, our responsibility, he wrote. The mighty tide of God's grace and favor is even now sweeping by us in its prayer-directed course. There is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God. It is time to get together and plunge in individually and collectively. He went on to say the opportunity of a lifetime, of centuries, is at our door to be eternally gained or lost. There is no time to hesitate. Act quickly, lest another take thy crown. O church of Christ, awake. Be baptized with power and then fly to rescue others and to meet your Lord. There's something reverberating in my spirit today. There is a certain urgency in my spirit today that says I believe that this church as individuals and as a whole. We are standing at a particular moment in time, amen, that we must seize the opportunity that is before us. We must jump into the water. We can no longer afford to stand and watch it pass by. We can no longer stand and, and, and be satisfied to simply dwell in the ankle deep waters. But there is a surge and there is a flow and there is a move and there is an opportunity and those who will leap into the flow. Amen. Those that are willing to go a little further, we're going to find ourselves swept into a spirit of God to a degree that we have not experienced heretofore. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anybody could break over into a Holy Ghost right now. Well, I wonder if there's anybody that could just lift up your voice with passion and pray in English out loud. Hallelujah to God. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, lift your voice. Oh, shout. Oh, magnify. Oh, give glory. Oh, give praise. Oh, give honor to the King. Hallelujah. If you're in agreement with the spirit of God's moving right now, leap to your feet and lift your voice and clap your hands and magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The call, the call is upon us to go a little further. You can be seated. Abraham and Isaac traveled a three-day journey. Abraham told the young men, abide here. He said, we will go yonder and worship. 
They'd already traveled a three-day journey, but they wanted more than an ordinary worship service. So they went a little further. Because they were willing to go a little further, they received a heavenly, heavenly visitation. The angel of the Lord spoke to them. They received a promise from heaven. In Genesis 22 and 17, God said, In blessing I will bless thee. Multiplying I will multiply thee. Thy seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. By going a little further, they got a revelation of God. Amen. For even God has provided himself a lamb. Amen. They had a revelation of Jehovah Jireh. How did this happen? Because they said, if you want to stay here, that's fine. But we're going a little further. We're climbing the mountain. You can stay back here on the porch. You can remain in your condition. But we're going further. We're moving on. We're going beyond what is the ordinary. We're moving. In my prayer, I'm going to pray like I've never prayed. In my worship, I'm going further. In my fasting, I'm going a little further. In my personal, individual, spiritual response, I'm going a little further. Why? Amen. Because I want the miraculous. I want revival. I want the power. I want revelation. Zacchaeus had a small person, but he had a great desire. And his desire propelled him to go a little further. Let me tell you something. You may be small in stature today, even spiritually, but don't let that, amen, hinder your desire to move beyond your current position. You may say, well, I've never seen a miracle. I've never seen a blinded eye open. I've never seen a lame arm healed. I've never seen this or I've never seen that. I've never seen a hundred soul revival and your spiritual stature may be stymied and dwarfed because of your past experiences. But Zacchaeus said, I'm not going to allow that to stop me from getting something from God today. It don't matter if you're in this place and you've never seen Jesus before. You can elevate your current position and get in the presence of Jesus Christ and when you do, he will change your life. Somebody shout it to God with me. His desire to see Jesus. Yeah, that's all it was. Just a desire to see Jesus propelled him to go a little further. Amen. He had to reposition himself for this to happen. Well, I can pastor a little bit right here, I guess. Amen. Amen. Some folks might even be thinking right now, well, you know, I don't see it. I don't see it. Somehow I just can't visualize it. Amen. Somehow I just can't see it. Well, you might have to change your position. You might need to reposition yourself, your thinking your attitude, your prayer life, your worship. Elevate, get a little higher, climb a tree. Quit standing down at the trunk and wondering whether you can get up there or not. Scurry on up. Jesus is coming by. The opportunity is here. You don't want to miss it. Oh, somebody shout yes. His desire propelled him to go a little further. He sought to see Jesus. But in order to see Jesus, he had to reposition himself for this to happen. Now, I'm going to issue a warning right here, a caution, a cautionary statement. Amen. There's going to be some that's going to come to you and say, well, this can't happen, and that can't happen. And what's gotten into Brother Morgan? He went off to another camp, and he came back all zealous. Hey, if you remember, I've been zealous for about 10 years, actually over 30 years of ministry. Well, 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 we know we've been here. This is the way that it's been. Maybe you need to find a different seat. Maybe you need to find a tree to climb. Elevate your position. Change the way that you're looking. The higher that you can go in the spirit, amen, the higher that you can move up in Jesus Christ, the more that you're going to be able to see. Amen. Come on, Lord, lift us up and let us stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher. 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody's about to break out. Somebody's about to climb a tree. Somebody's about to get to a place where you can see what I'm preaching about. We're at a moment right here. We're at a moment right here. We're at a moment right here right now. I've got more preaching to do, and I can do it. Hallelujah. But we're at a moment right here. God's wondering who's going to be the first to step into the water. God's wondering who's going to be the first to move beyond what is normal for you. Who's going to be willing to get out of the safety zone and... Well, let me preach a little more. We're not quite there yet. Let me preach a little more. Uh, I'm kind of one of these melancholic type of people, or I can be. I was driving down Highway 27. You can be seated if you want to. I was driving down Highway 27 the other day, coming back from somewhere, and I had to pass through Oretta. And I was, I, Nia and Caleb and some others were with us. And I said, you know what? The house I was raised in is right up the road here. I'd love to buy it one day. Lo and behold, a passed by. It's got a for sale sign. I called about the price. I don't want to buy it that much. But you know what? I don't know if I really want to go in there. Because it probably, I know it doesn't look like it looked when I was a little boy. Can I preach to you a minute? I've had some folks come in for visits that used to go to church here since we've done the restructure, the remodel. And they said, oh, it's beautiful, but it's kind of, kind of makes me sad. And I can understand that. Brother Allen, I give honor to your father for his labor, and you told me he loved it. I'm thankful. Listen. Don't you misread your pastor right now. If you expect the church to look like it did in the 1960s or 70s, we got, we, we're, we're, we're holiness people and we're going to live in holiness. We still worship. Still preach the apostles' doctrine are going to continue to until Jesus comes. But if you're expecting a 1970s Experience in 2022, you're never going to be satisfied. And let me tell you something about that. Let me tell you something about that. And I'm, man, I'm going to tell you what, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm one of those. What does the Bible say concerning the kingdom of God? 
the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. In other words, if we're still here today and we still look like First Pentecostal Church sulfur looked in the 1970s, again, styles are different. Just because it's a different style doesn't mean it's not holy. Paint colors are different. Carpet looks different. A lot of different things are going on. But what's going on? The Bible says the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. If we were stuck there, then we are not increasing. We are not uh, pro pro producing. We're not moving forward. Don't misread me. We're not going into some false kind of religion, but I'm going to tell you what. Amen. There's more of the power of God that's got to be experienced in the church today. Amen. Let us not be disgruntled because a song might sound a little different than the one that we like. I'm telling you, I got to work on that myself. Amen. The preacher may have a stripe in his shirt. Amen. And I wish it was solid white. Come on, folks. Let's get real. We're talking about the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands and give the Lord praise. I refuse to sit back and be bitter and stay on the porch and wish for the past when God says I'm wanting to take the power that you have possessed and propel you into this generation to do the work of the kingdom of God. Come on, clap your hands and give God. Oh, come on, really praise him right now. Hallelujah. 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 And I could preach about some things right now. And I'll refrain from doing so because we have, we have guests here and I don't want to cause any kind of confusion. But you just know we're not compromising holiness. Be ye holy for I am holy. We're not going the way of the world. We're not going to do worldly things. We're not going to engage in the spirit of this world. We're going to engage in the spirit of God. I'm telling you, there is a move. There is a work. There is a call. We are living in a time of opportunity. Let's seize it now. Clap your hands and give God praise. Stand with me, musicians. Come with you. I've still got more preaching to do but I've got to bring it to a close. I know the buses have to run. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he was willing, because Zacchaeus was willing to go a little further, he could see Jesus. He gained the attention of Jesus. His life was changed. Maintaining the status quo is sufficient for those who are not spiritually driven. Let me say that again. Maintaining the status quo is sufficient for those who are not spiritually driven, but for those of us who want Jesus to come for a visit, to make his habitation here, going a little further is always the requirement. And so Ezekiel said, it's waters to swim in. The waters issued forth out from the house of the Lord and from under the threshold of the house. They came forth from the altar First, it was waters to the ankles, and then they went a little further. Say that with me. They went a little further. And then it was waters to the knees, and then, and then it was waters to the loins, and then and there they found that it was waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. The further he went, the deeper it became. Certain opportunities only come once in a generation and it would seem that we are at one of those moments. I want our youth group to come up here and stand with me on this platform. Come quickly, hurry.
We have a powerful opportunity standing right here. And there are others that are in classes. Others on instruments. I have known and seen and witnessed churches that lose this. And brother, if we lose this, we're set back 20 years. We got to start all over again in the toddler Sunday school class. This is our opportunity. This is an opportunity that God has given to us. They have a passion. They have a zeal. They're not ashamed to shout. They're not ashamed to dance. They're not ashamed to talk in tongues. They're not ashamed to run the aisles. They're not ashamed. Come on up here. They're not ashamed, amen, to allow the power and presence of God to pulsate. Opportunity once passed is gone forever. It's gone forever. I've seen churches lose a generation of young people. When they lose a generation of young people, they've lost their future. They've lost their hope. They've lost so much. by the grace and the help of God. You say, Brother Morgan, you could have hired somebody to do that work down on that lot and I may hire somebody to finish it. I'm going to tell you what I was doing down there. I was sweating my guts out, but I was bonding with some young men. to get something in their gut about investing in the kingdom and not just being somebody that comes to the house of the Lord three times a week and that's all there is to church but to get ownership possession, unity now I'm not going to teach y'all how to sow amen but I'm going to tell you what we're, we're, we're and I mentioned earlier in this service We are in the process, and I want to commend and thank humbly Brother Spencer and Sister Angela Ware for your years of work with these young people and have done an excellent job and have brought them to where they are today, organizing youth trips and et cetera, et cetera, and all the different things that have been done. But the reality is we're in our 40s now, and I'm almost not in my 40s anymore but we got an opportunity of a young couple with passion and burden and desire and ministry in their hearts. And we're about to turn them loose with this youth group. And I've told my son, I've had some heart-to-hearts. I want them to be a busy youth group. I want them to be an active youth group. And the things that I have placed in you, son, I'm charging you in the name of Jesus before God and these witnesses to put in these young men nigh of the things that your parents had put in you I'm charging you in the name of Jesus to put in these young ladies there are going to be times that you're not going to want to do it there are going to be times that you wish you weren't a youth leader but I'm going to tell you what you're doing is you're preserving a generation to the glory of God And so parents, I implore you in the name of Jesus. Grandparents, I implore you in the name of Jesus. Recognize where we're at. Don't withhold your son or your daughter from active participation in what's going on in the work of Jesus Christ. What are we doing? We're going to teach them to swim. 
We're going to teach them to get down this ankle deep water and splash around a little bit and then go a little further and get in that knee deep water. Amen. And go a little further and get in that loin deep water until they can swim in the spirit. So they can walk down the school aisles and lay hands on somebody and God to heal them. They can start clubs in their school if they're in, in, in public school where they have Bible studies. Hey, let me tell you how it works. There was a, there was a group that one of the teachers at, at the middle school here in Sulphur had, a religious club. They asked me to come and speak. Amen. Caleb was in that club. Just a few weeks ago, guess who got an invitation to go back to middle school here in Sulphur and speak to the kids? It was somebody that shone a light when they were in the school. Seize the day. Seize the opportunity. It's here. It's here. We've got to act now. To delay is to lose all. I want the parents of these young people to come and stand in front of them, facing them. If the parent is not here, Brother Trent, if you'll step in for these in your class that don't have a parent. 